On the status bar at the bottom of my user interface are some drawing tools. Uh, these are often referred to as drawing aids because they assist me in drawing accurately. These tools I want to be able to use quickly and sometimes I want to turn them on and turn them off as needed. So therefore they show up as a panel of toggle switches to be easily be able to turn them on and off. If I hover my mouse over each of these tools, my tooltip tells me what the tool is for. Infer constraints, and you notice that it also gives me a keyboard shortcut for turning these tools on and off. Here I have my snap mode. Notice that it's telling me the F key on the keyboard that I can also use to toggle this particular drawing tool on and off. Here's my grid display. F7 would turn it on and off. Now notice the colors. If they are lit up in blue, it means that these are, tools are currently on, and if they're gray, it means that the tools are currently turned off. Let's look at our toolbar and see which ones of these tools you are, would be most likely to be using starting out in 2D drawing. My first one, infer constraints, will generally be left turned off unless you're doing parametric drawing. My snap and my grid mode will change my drawing window display. If I click on grid, it displays a graph paper like grid in my display window. If you right click and go to the settings, here I have my drafting settings dialog box and you notice that I can control many of the settings for my drawing aids or my drawing tools. In this case, I can see that the grid is turned on and currently this is my grid spacing. If I change this from 0.5 to 5 and I hit the tab key to make both the X and Y spacing the same, then that will change my display as soon as I say OK. If I turn the snap on and also change this to 5, and make my X and Y the same by hitting the tab key, I'll say OK, and now you notice that my grid has changed. If I start to draw, I am restrained to snapping to points on my grid. And I'm snapping every five units as I draw. So snap and grid can be useful if I want to set up a grid-like pattern and I want to snap to it. I can turn the snap off or I can turn the grid off at any particular time. My next drawing tool is ortho mode. When ortho mode is turned on it's going to restrict my drawing of lines to horizontal or vertical. Ortho mode is very useful when I'm drawing objects that have 90 degree corners and whose construction consists of horizontal and vertical lines. My next tool is polar tracking. Polar tracking like ortho will restrict how I can draw lines but in this case I get to choose the angles at which it will lock in. Notice that when I right click it shows me that polar tracking is currently set at 45 degrees. So if I start a line command and I start drawing you'll notice that as I move up to an angle when I reach 45 degrees polar tracking will lock on that angle and allow me to draw a line specifically at that angle. So it will lock in at each increment of 45 degrees as I'm drawing. My next drawing aid is Object Snap. Object Snap is an important drawing tool because it allows me to snap 
or to attach uh, lines or circles or arcs to other parts of geometry that I've already drawn. You notice that when I right click on top of the object snap button it shows me which object snaps are currently active I can see by the window. So it will find endpoints and centers of circles and intersections and I can turn on additional object snaps as needed. So with my object snaps turned on I'm going to start drawing a line and I'm going to end this command. I'll start another line and you notice the green box that shows up when I get close. That is my object snap. If I click now with that box showing I've now attached my next line right on the endpoint of that line. With midpoint turned on here I'm showing an object snap of a midpoint. So I could actually snap this line to the midpoint of that line. Using object snaps is very important because we cannot draw accurately enough by eye. We need to make sure that when we are drawing individual lines and circles and arcs that we have snapped them to the existing geometry and we don't leave any small gaps uh, that would cause problems or make inaccuracies in our drawing. My next button, 3D Object Snap, I will probably not be using when I'm doing 2D drawing. But my next one, Object Snap Tracking, is an important drawing tool. In order for Object Snap Tracking to work properly, I have to have Object Snap turned on as well as Object Snap Tracking. With Object Snap Tracking turned on, I can find a object snap point, for example a midpoint here, and if I hesitate until I see the, that tool name light up, as I start to move away I will see a tracking line. Now these lines will come in either horizontal or vertical lines. So say I wanted to uh, draw a circle in the center of this rectangle, a two inch circle, and I want to make sure it's right in the center. The center point of my circle is the center point uh, of this rectangle. So I would track down from this midpoint, go over and track from this midpoint. Notice I hesitate long enough for the name to show up. Now here I have two tracking points that intersect each other in the center. I click my mouse to start drawing. I'm going to say a two inch radius and I've now located that circle right in the middle of the rectangle using object snap tracking. My next tool, Allow or Disallow Dynamic UCS, I will probably leave turned off while doing using 2D drawing. But Dynamic Input is a tool that I will use quite often. With Dynamic Input turned on, you'll notice that when I'm drawing lines, I have a heads-up display showing me distance, an angle, and allowing me to see some of the information that's usually only displayed on the command line window. You can think of dynamic input as like a heads-up display next to your drawing area where you can enter important information. With dynamic input turned off, you'll notice that when you're drawing, you would have to look down onto the command line to see what command input is necessary and if I was entering information, it shows up down in the command line instead of my dynamic input prompt. My tool for show or hide line weights depends on whether I'm using uh, line weight properties in my drawing. If I am, by turning this off, all of my line weights look the same. If I'm using line pro weight properties in my drawing and I turn this on, then objects that are thicker or darker will show up in my drawing area. The last drawing tool that we'll look at is the Quick Properties tool, and I can toggle this on and off. When my Quick Properties is turned on, when I have no command active and I choose an object, I see my quick properties box. 
This gives me some basic information about the properties that are associated with a particular object in my drawing. I can hit escape to turn that off. Uh, it's a good idea to have quick properties turned on, but if it gets in the way, you can come down and you can toggle it off so that you no longer have to look at it.